presidential election in 2008, uh, President Obama's victory uh, traces largely to a, a huge uh, influx of capital from the financial institutions. So at the end of the campaign, they prefer, preferred him to his uh, opponent, uh, McCain, and they expected to be rewarded. And of course they were. You know, the country at that time was mired in a deep recession. Uh, so Obama's first act was to select an economic team. It was drawn almost entirely from those who caused the economic crisis that he inherited. He systematically avoided uh, critics of their practices, including the prestigious ones, Nobel laureates. Uh, actually, the business press uh, wrote rather ironically about this. Uh, Bloomberg News did a review of Obama's economic team, went through each one of them, uh, looked at their records, and said, concluded that uh, these people shouldn't be uh, on the economic team to fix up the economy. They should be getting subpoenas, which was pretty correct. They didn't, of course. Well, not surprisingly, the team chose measures which rewarded the major culprits who are now uh, richer and more powerful than before and uh, poised to lead the way to the next uh, uh, probably more severe financial crisis. Well, there was recently an interesting article about this by uh, the special inspector of the bailout programs, Neil Borofsky. He wrote a bitter condemnation of the way it was executed. Uh, he points out that the legislative act that authorized the bailout was a bargain. Uh, the financial institutions that were responsible for the crisis that would be saved by the taxpayer and the victims of their misdeeds and real crimes, the victims would be somewhat compensated by measures to protect uh, home values and preserve uh, the housing price. Well, only the first part of the bargain was kept. The financial institutions were rewarded uh, causing the crisis, and they were but the rest of the program was closing the continued amount. Programs lifetime, while the biggest banks are 20% larger than they were before the crisis, and control a larger part of the economy than ever. They reasonably assume that the government will rescue them again if necessary. The credit rating agencies, uh, credit rating uh, agencies incorporate future gov uh, government market uh, bailouts into their assessments of the largest bank. That means exaggerating market distortions that provide them with an unfair advantage uh, over smaller institutions which continue to struggle. So in short, as he puts it, Obama's programs were a giveaway to Wall Street executives and a blow in the solar plexus to their defenseless victims. In other words, the government uh, listened uh, to those who have a voice in the political system and acted accordingly. It's all completely in accord with uh, Smith's truism. Well, there should be no surprises here. There are uh, careful studies of Senate votes over a long period, and they show that the Senate is indeed responsive to a sector of the population, uh, the top third income. Actually, a closer analysis would show that it's a very small fraction of that uh, top third. In contrast, there's no correlation at all between Senate votes and opinions of the middle third. And for the bottom third, there is a correlation. It's negative. Uh, Senate votes are counter preferences for the bottom third. And on major issues of foreign and domestic policy, there's quite a sharp disconnect between public opinion and public policy uh, over a long period. Well, one might argue that these results don't really depart very far from the intentions of the founders of the society. 
of James Madison, who was the main framer of the constitutional order, uh, he explained to the constitutional convention that uh, power should remain in the hands of the Senate. The Senate was not chosen directly by voters until about a century ago. Uh, in those days, uh, the executive was pretty much an administrator, not an emperor. And the House, the third part of the system, which is closer to the public, had much more limited authority. And that's the way, in fact, it was set up. Uh, as Mott Madison explained to the Constitutional Convention, the Senate represents the wealth of the nation, the more capable set of men, men who have respect for property owners and their rights, and understand that government must protect the minority of the opulent against the majority. That's quite accurate. Something else that ought to be taught in elementary school. Uh, we should uh, bear in mind, however, in kind of in Madison's defense, that his mentality was pre-capitalist. So he assumed that a senator would be, as he put it, an enlightened statesman and benevolent philosopher. Uh, the Senate would be a chosen body of citizens whose wisdom may best discern the true interests of their country and whose patriotism and love of justice will be least likely to sacrifice it to temporary or partial considerations. That they would just, they would uh, therefore refine and enlarge the public view guarding the public against the mischief of the democratic majorities. So rather like the uh, noble uh, Roman gentleman and the Smith before him had a uh, Well, it didn't take long for Madison to uh, shift his thinking about this. So he viewed the early results of the democratic experiment. He had second thoughts. In fact, by 1792, just a couple of years later, and then he declared what he called the daring depravity of the times as the stock jobbers become the Praetorian band of the government, at once its tool and its tyrant, bribed by its largesses and overawing it by clamors and combinations, which isn't a bad description of uh, today's political system and its uh, social and economic correlates.